I'm going to derive Simpson's rule on one interval. Now Simpson's rule is about uh, the approximating the areas uh, under curves using quadratic approximations. So we have a curve, it goes between a few points and we, we put a parabola there, a piece of a parabola there, and we find the area of that parabola instead. And the reason it works the way it does is because the calculation that you do produces the exact correct area if your function really was a parabola. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove that if you do a specific calculation on just some of the function values on an interval, it will produce the exact correct area for a function that's a quadratic function. So here's my quadratic function. It's uh, f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c. And here is a graph of a quadratic function, and it's going to have an area between a and b. I mean, I'm not actually going to quite do that. Simpson's rule makes more sense to me uh, as an average value. So I'm going to prove that the average value of this function from a to b is the same as the average of some of its function values. So I'm going to start by finding the average value of this function from a to b and doing as much calculation as I can to see where I go. And then I'm going to figure out what function values I should average to get the same answer. So the average value of f on the interval a, b is, well I know uh, that an area, if I imagine it as a rectangle, will be a width times a height. And so this area is going to be the width times the height, and that height is the average value. And so that means the average value is going to be the area divided by the width. So the area is this, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and the width is this distance from a to b, so b minus a, and I'm going to need to divide by that to get the average value. All right, let me calculate this as far as I can. So 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of ax squared plus bx plus c dx. Okay. So 1 over b minus a. Now, uh, the a will still be there. The x will go up by 1 and will divide by the new power. The b will still be there. The power of x will go up by 1. I'll divide by the new power. The c will still be there. And a 1 would go up to x. Okay. Right. So, we'd have a times a third of b cubed plus b times a half of b squared plus c times b minus a times a third of a cubed plus b times a half of a squared plus c times a. Nice. Well, let me have a look at this. Um, well, this one I noticed that if I do the CB minus the CA, that'll be C lots of B minus A. And the B times B minus A here and the divide by B minus A here will make that disappear. Okay. What about this? B squared minus A squared can be factorized with a B minus A. That'll be cool. And B cubed minus A cubed, I can factorize that with a B minus A as well. So I reckon that's the first step that I need to do. So a um, times a third of b cubed minus a cubed plus b times a half b squared minus a squared plus c b minus a. All right. So let's see. 
All right, well, that's this still hasn't gone away yet. A times a third. So I know that's got a B minus A, and the other bit is B squared plus AB plus A squared. And then B times a half, and this will be B minus A times B plus A plus C times B minus A. And now they've all got a B minus A, and so this dividing the B minus A will make them go away. So I end up with A times a third times B squared plus AB plus A squared plus B times a half of B plus A plus C. Okay. Hmm. Well, there's some couple of things I notice. If this was a 2AB, then this would be B plus A all squared. Uh, and even without that bit there, this is like B times something plus C, which is the same as the end of our function. So I'm wondering if I call this something, then it'll be B times that plus C, and I might be able to find the function value at this spot. And that is half of B plus A. That's the average of A and B. So that, that's like a particular point that might be interesting, actually, the midpoint. So let's give it a name. So let M be half of B plus A. Um, so there's A, there's B, and there's M. Okay, so then my average value of F on AB is now A times a third of B squared plus AB plus A squared plus BM plus C. And if I do that trick with the um, adding an AB to get a 2AB and taking one off, I'll be able to write it in terms of M. So this is B squared plus 2AB plus A squared minus AB C. And so that's B plus A squared minus AB. And that uh, 2m because m was half of b plus a so b plus a would be 2m okay and so let's see a times a third times 4m squared minus a b so all right, so I know that A times M squared plus B M plus C would be F of M. I'm going to have to separate this out to, to do that. So A times four thirds of M squared. Okay, now four thirds of M squared is one and a third. So that's going to be M squared plus a third of M squared. A m squared plus a third of m squared. I reckon um, I can probably move that third to the front now. I don't think this is going to become anything anymore. But I'll leave it there for now because this one had the third after. All right, now I've got a m squared plus b m plus c, which is f of m, and then this other bit. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with that. f of m, that's this bit, and then this other bit has got, well, a third of a, m squared minus a, b. I suppose I could probably put the a, b 
A and B back here and make this a bit simpler. But I think I might just leave it like that. That's really cool. The area, like the average value of F, is F of the midpoint plus this other bit. Um, which is really cool because if because if A and B were equal, if it wasn't an interval but it was a single point, then the average value um, then A and B would be equal to M and this would be zero and it would just be the midpoint value, which is kind of cool. Uh, that makes sense. And the closer together A and B are, the closer AB will be to M squared and the closer the average value on an interval will be just to the center point. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, all right. So what I want to do is I want to approximate this average value here, um, the average value on my interval, using using some at uh, the average of some of the values, and it looks like f the midpoint is going to feature quite a lot. And the only other two points that we we have marked in our diagram are a and b. So I think I might start by adding them together and seeing what I get. All right. So let's see, f of a is a a squared plus b a plus c, and f of b is a b squared plus b b plus c, and so f of a plus f of b, well last time we added them together this way. I might try and do that again. So, a of a squared plus b squared plus b of a plus b plus 2c. And look, there's our a plus b again. I mean, we had b plus a before, but it's the same thing. So, that's half of m. And the a squared, a plus b all squared had a 2a here. So, we can, we can adjust that again and do the same trick. So, let's do that a squared plus 2ab minus, uh, sorry, plus b squared minus 2ab plus b times a plus b plus 2c and this is a plus b all squared minus 2ab plus b a plus b plus 2c and the a plus b's are really 2m, so let's do that. Okay, so we've got a times 4m squared minus 2ab plus 2 lots of bm plus 2c. So 4am squared minus 2aab plus 2bm plus 2c. Okay, well, am squared plus bm plus c is f of m. So we, if these both have a 2, so if this had a 2, then I'd have 2 lots of f of m. So let's separate that out. So 2am squared minus 2ab plus 2 squared plus 2bm plus 2c. All right, and these both have a 2a. So actually, actually that's really cool because the thing we were looking for had f of m and an a times m squared minus ab, and I've got that again. That's cool. So this is two lots of f of m. And this is 2a times m squared minus ab. That's really similar to the thing I was looking for. Okay, so if I average these two, I'll be dividing by two, and I'll end up with f of m plus a lots of m squared minus ab, which is very close, except I need a third of a. Okay, so if I added an f of, another f of m here, then I'd have 3f of m, and this bit won't change. And then when I divide by 3, it'll be 2 thirds. 
if I added two f of m's, it'd be four f m here, and I'll divide by four, and I'll have a half. So what I want to do is I want to divide this by six. If I want to get a third here, I'm going to have to divide by two by six. So I want to add enough f of m so there's six things. Okay, so f of a plus four f of m plus f of b would end up with six f of m's here when I add four of them. And so now if I divide by six, so a sixth of f of a plus four f of m plus four of f of b is a sixth of this, which would be f of m plus one third, because two divided by six is the same as a third. Which is the average value. Um, so we get, um, right, well, let me write that down. That's the average value of F on AB. So just to finish it off, the traditional Simpsons rules about areas. Um, at the moment, what we have is the average value of F on AB is the average of these six function values. Four of them are fm and the other two are fa and f of b. Um, but the traditional Simpsons rules about areas. So let me um, summarize this. So we have the average value was equal to this. And it was also equal to this, f of a plus 4 f of the midpoint plus f of the other point. And so therefore the integral will be p minus a on 6 times this. And that's Simpson's rule for one interval.